everybody. I'm taking our reading outside today. We're gonna to be reading a traditional fairy tale today. We're gonna to be reading Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And as we read, I want you to listen closely and notice if you see any of the fairy tale features that we talked about yesterday in our story. Even in the title of our book today, you might notice one of the things that we talked about yesterday, the three bears. Remember, a lot of fairy tales feature number groups and one of the most common is the number three. Once there was a little girl called Goldilocks. What a sweet child, said someone new in town. That's what you think, said a neighbor. One morning, Goldilocks' mother sent her to buy muffins in the next village. You must promise not to take the shortcut through the forest, she said. I've heard that bears live there. I promise, said Goldilocks. But to tell the truth, Goldilocks was one of those naughty little girls who did exactly as they please. Shortcut. Danger. Very risky. Not a good idea. Turn back go the other way. Does it look like she's going to go the other way? Meanwhile, in a clearing deep in, deeper inside the forest, in a charming house all their own, a family of brown bears was sitting down to breakfast. Patooey, cried big old Papa Bear. This is Porridge is scalding. I've burned my tongue. I'm dying, cried Baby Bear. Now really, said Mama Bear, who was of medium size, that's quite enough. I know, said Papa Bear. Why don't we go for a spin? While the porridge is cooling. Excellent, said Mama Bear. So they got on their rusty old bicycle and off they went. A few minutes later, Goldilocks arrived at the bear's house. She walked right in without even bothering to knock. On the dining room table were three inviting bowls of porridge. I don't mind if I do, said Goldilocks, helping herself to the biggest bowl. But the porridge in the biggest bowl was much too hot. Patooey, cried Goldilocks and she spat it out. Next, she tasted the porridge in the medium-sized bowl, but that porridge was much too cold. Then, Goldilocks tasted the porridge in the little bowl and it was just right, neither too hot nor too cold. In fact, she liked it so much that she gobbled it all up. Feeling full and satisfied, Goldilocks thought it would be great fun to have a look around. Right away, she noticed a lot of coarse brown fur everywhere. Hmm, they must have kitties, she said. In the parlor, there were three chairs. I don't mind if I do, she said, climbing into the biggest one. But the biggest chair was much too hard and she just couldn't get comfortable. Next, she sat in the medium-sized chair but that chair was much too soft and she thought she might never get out of it. Then Goldilocks sat in the little chair and that was just right. Neither too hard nor too soft. In fact, she liked it so much that she rocked and rocked until the chair fell completely to pieces. She's not treating this other person's house very nicely, is she? Now, all that rocking left Goldilocks quite tuckered out. I could take a little snooze, she said. So she went to look for a comfy place to nap. Upstairs were three beds. I don't mind if I do, said Goldilocks, and she got into the biggest one, but the head of the biggest bed was much too high. Next, she tried the medium-sized bed but the head of that bed was much too low. Then Goldilocks tried the little bed and it was just right. 
Soon, she was all nice and cozy and sound asleep. She did not hear the bears come home. The three bears were mighty hungry, but when they went in for breakfast, they could scarcely believe their eyes. Somebody has been in my porridge, said Papa Bear. Somebody has been in my porridge, said Mama Bear. Somebody has been in my porridge, said Baby Bear, and eaten it all up. In the parlor, the three bears were in for another little surprise. Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said Papa Bear. Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said Mama Bear. Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said Baby Bear, and broken it to smithereens. The three bears went upstairs on tiptoe, not knowing what they would discover. At first, everything seemed fine. But then, Papa Bear lay down on his big grass bed. Somebody has been lying in my bed, he cried, and he was not amused. Egads, cried Mama Bear. Somebody has been lying in my bed. Look, cried Baby Bear. Somebody has been lying in my bed and she's still there. Now see here, roared Papa Bear. Goldilocks woke up with a start and her eyes nearly popped out of her head. But before the bears could demand a proper explanation, Goldilocks was out of bed, out the window and on her way home. Who was that little girl? Asked Baby Bear. I have no idea, said Mama Bear but I hope we never see her again. And they never did. The end. Now, what do you think the moral or the lesson of Goldilocks is? Remember, most fairy tales try to teach us a lesson. Do you think there was a lesson in that story? Do you think Goldilocks learned anything from her trip to the bear's house? and eating their porridge and breaking their chairs and sleeping in their beds. What do you think? Did you notice any other fairy tale features in that story? I hope you enjoyed it. Tomorrow we'll read a fractured fairy tale around the same story. So it's Goldilocks, but it's told in a completely different way.